Sometimes a small body belies a toughness of spirit. The man they call El Terrible harbors an unshakable pride that has willed him to victory for a generation. Every moment of Eric Morales' life has been predicated on his refusal to back up. This is a go-forward fighter. He is there to take your heart. Manny Pacquiao is a hungry young brawler with a powerful left and an eager heart. This is why we use the word sensation. Manny Pacquiao is a storm. This is a typhoon that had come across the Pacific. He's inspired an impoverished nation to hope and has become its crown prince. Here's a kid who sold stolen cigarettes on the streets so he could eat and becomes his country's most celebrated citizen. Chapter one of their tale began nearly two years ago when the veteran warrior outdueled boxing's hottest sensation. And Morales chases him across the ring and says, let's fight. And I told him that, Eric, we took you lightly, and he told me to shut the F up and sit down and stop crying. There's kind of an ugly side to Eric Morales. He's real morose at times and angry, but Pacquiao fought fire with firepower in their rematch. And when Pacquiao dropped him, that was symbolic because nobody knocks Tom Morales. In the grand finale on November 18th, a battle-torn legend will try to turn back time and a people's champion will stake his claim as one of boxing's pound-for-pound -pound best. Pacquiao is a dangerous, dangerous fight. To take him three times is almost suicide. This is the countdown to Pacquiao Morales three. In the first news conference in preparation for this fight, Eric looked worse, more out of shape, more overweight than I think I've ever seen him before. I would not have known him. I would not have recognized him. I mean, he looked like a bird that had been feeding on a carcass too long. I mean, he was puffed up. 130 pounds is just not a natural weight for him at this point in his life. And so he's, his biggest fight before Manny Pacquiao was going to be on the scales. To help in that battle, Morales has changed his routine. He decided to work with a team of personal trainers in Los Angeles for eight weeks before heading to camp in Mexico. I mean, if you want to be fast, you got to train fast. You are what you train. If you want to be quick, you got to train quick. That's it. Good. Now you got it. Good. Fue fundamental el peso, pero fue la edad, el tiempo, las rutinas. It just gets harder and harder and harder every time, and particularly hard when you're a kid from El Norte who's rich, who will never have to worry about a peso again as long as you live. La Zona Norte in Tijuana, Mexico, a border town to the United States with an infamous reputation. It's a crazy town. It's like being in Tombstone. That's what Tijuana's like. It is wild. You can end up losing your life over anything. There's no law. He grew up in one of the roughest neighborhoods in our hemisphere. He grew up in a place where you, you fight or die. La zona norte siempre ha sido peligroso. Inicio, prendí boxeo por defenderme en la escuela, por saber. Eric was homeschooled in his boxing education by his father, Jose, a former pro fighter who ran a gym in their home. Uh, Eric Morales grew up literally above the gym, so it seemed kind of preordained that he was going to be a fighter himself. The thing was, his father didn't really want him to fight. No me fue tan bien. Quizás no caí en las buenas manos. Entonces, yo tenía miedo de que él cayera en las mismas manos. Tenía una forma diferente de ver las cosas a lo que yo. Pero realmente al final del día estamos en el mismo camino. And even when he turned pro, Mr. Morales said, well, now I got him. I'm going to really match him up against these seasoned veterans, and he would walk right through him. And pretty soon he realized that his son was not just good, but possibly great. On the other side of the world, Manny Pacquiao was surviving an early life of dire poverty. Well, the Philippines is a, is a rather poor country. It's a third world country like Mexico. They're considered like on the lower tier. 
just, you know, very poor area. They don't have much. In General Santa City, if you go to the bathroom, you take a bucket and you pour it, you pour the water down, that's how you flush the toilet. And uh, they don't use toilet paper. They use their hands and wash their hands. We don't have uh, money to support my study, so I, I had to decide to continue my backing career. When I went to Manila, I was 14 years old. He told me about his father eating his dog and him running away from home because of that. And that's how he ended up in the, in the boxing gym in Manila. If you're poor and you don't have money to eat, you either steal or eat a dog. All of the stories, I'm not sure that I believe all of them, but they're great stories. He's been one of these aggressive kids that was going to fight and do it his own way. Whereas Eric just had to come downstairs to become a fighter. Manny Pacquiao had to leave his home and his family and go to the big city. Back in the bull rings of Tijuana, Eric Morales continued to cultivate his homegrown talent. Estaba enfrentando a buenos peleadores, muy buenos a nivel nacional, a nivel mundial. A pasadita las 20 estaba disputando el título mundial. In 1997, Morales faced his biggest challenge yet, vying for the 122-pound title against fellow Mexican Daniel Zaragoza. Zaragoza was a big obstacle for Morales. He was an iron chin gladiator from Mexico City, and he had never been stopped. 